Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, where we're going to walk you through the new Eloquent dashboards. First of all, my name is Derek Bell. I'm the Customer Success and Marketing Director at Marketing Cube. I spend most of my time uh, sitting with clients and helping them get more from their instance of Eloqua. And so today, uh, doing the webinar is just one way to try and reach a, a few more people uh, with some exciting new developments. So let's have a look and understand exactly what it is that's happening. So you'll notice um, through accessing Eloqua over the last month or so that you now have a new menu under reporting, which is the dashboard area and also some changes to Insight. There's more changes coming to Insight, but today what we want to do is focus just on the new dashboards and help you understand some of the metrics and uh, help you have clarity around the information that you're actually looking at. So there are a range of ways you can adjust these pre-built uh, dashboards. There's, there's filters that help you interact with them and uh, slice and dice the data a little. So let's, uh, let's move forward and have a closer look. So from the analytics menu within Eloqua, you'll be able to choose dashboards and arrive at a screen that looks just like this. So at the moment we have campaigns of which there are two types of reports and then also emails. And again, there are two types of reports that you can access from each of those. Let's have a look at those in a little bit more detail. First one is the campaign analysis. So this one really gives you a good overview of the campaigns that have been running and enabled you and it enables you to slice and dice that data by type, product or region. Uh, those metrics, if not set, um, will render that dashboard, well, not as helpful as it could be. And so we'll talk uh, or explain to you in just a moment how you can make sure you've got those uh, campaign types set up. The next one is the individual campaign performance. And what that does is provide a detailed view of the activity performance metrics for a very specific campaign. So on the left, the first one, campaign analysis overview, will cover multiple campaigns over a uh, a given time frame that you might have in place, um, last month, last week, last three months, whatever it might be. However, the individual campaign performance will take that same information, but now focus just on an individual campaign. If we look down at the bottom there, we've got the email analysis overview. So now again, what this enables you to do is look at multiple emails over a period of time, and it gives you metrics such as opens, click-throughs, form submissions, and more so that you can easily compare the performance of those various emails and look at which ones are really performing better. Again, if you've got the types activated within the reporting area of Eloqua, that will give you a lot better, uh, I suppose, uh, micro capability of digging in a little bit further uh, and not having just a 30,000 foot view of what you're doing. Then on the right hand side is the individual email performance. And what this does is provide a detailed view now of individual emails. And again, this time looking at unique open rates, click to open rates, form conversions, and also bounce back rates. So we'll explore those in a bit more detail for you in just a moment when we'll log in. But let's first of all, have a look at activity types and understand the impact of activity types on these dashboards. So there are inbound activities and there are outbound activities. So the inbound activities basically are those things that your recipients will do. So they'll open emails, they'll click through, they'll submit forms, visit the website, etc. And all of that, all of that activity and multiple times, not unique, but multiple uh, activities by the same campaign member uh, counted in that reporting. Now, the other thing to be aware of in the bottom paragraph here, you'll notice that inbound activity can also be generated by someone who wasn't initially targeted um, by the campaign. Sorry, so people who are initially targeted, but those who may not have been initially targeted. So, for example, if somebody forwards an email, uh, so one of your recipients forwards an email to a colleague, and that colleague was not in your campaign, the interaction by that colleague, by clicking through, opening, etc., will also count towards the uh, reporting available on the dashboard. So just something to keep in mind. Outbound activity. So this is response activity for the campaign. So this is where you as an organization need to define what is outbound activity. And, and so we call them responses effectively. And so your ability to not only assign what responses are, but also 
provide a ranking order uh, as to the number one type of response and then going down, uh, you can do that through the uh, setup area in the back end of Eloqua. So your administrator typically would be the person that would need to actually do that, but it would be something as a team that you probably want to have a little bit of a discussion around. So as you can see here, although a campaign member might respond in many ways to a campaign, for example, clicking through an email or submitting a form, Eloqua records only the response deemed by your organization as the highest priority response. So if from your point of view as an organization, email opens are important, you can rank that as number one. If uh, clicking through on an email is far more important to your organization, you can uh, deem that as number one or perhaps even a form submission is the number one. So there are several ways um, or several options you've got available to you there. It's simply up to you as an organization to determine what is and what has the greatest value. Let me uh, walk you through now how to do that. It's a fairly simple process, but again, you will need uh, administrator access in order to do that. So when we access the settings area of Eloqua, you'll notice in the database setup area, there's a section called response rules. If you click on response rules, you're brought to a screen that looks just like this. And um, what you're able to do here is you'll see there in the center, the response activity. You're able to determine exactly what it is, priority one, two, three, and four. And you can move those around should you want to at some point. Now, depending on the CRM that you're integrated with, whether it be Salesforce or NetSuite or Oracle, etc., uh, you'll see corresponding headings there as well. And that information will be familiar to you, uh, certainly for the Salesforce users, um, in relation to the campaign member status that you see uh, within Salesforce. Now the dashboard carries a range uh, of filters to help you slice and dice the data. And effectively they are both date range and then also the campaign options, which is type, product or region. So just a caveat there under date range, the, in order for them to appear, the campaign has to be active during the time frame. Um, so if you're wanting to report on um, a period from uh, say the last quarter of 2016, that time has obviously passed. However, any campaigns that were active during that time will show within that particular date range report. Campaign options. So what this does, this really helps you group the data on the dashboard by either type, product or region or all three, whichever. The region one is probably especially helpful, certainly for the larger clients who might be accessing or using a global instance of Eloqua. So if, you're, uh, if your colleagues or if you have colleagues in New Zealand, uh, throughout Australia and within Asia, uh, and certainly within Asia, Singapore, Hong Kong, India, etc., uh, you may want to break those down by region. And so you can certainly assign those by individual campaign. Otherwise, what you're looking at is everybody's data and often not as helpful when you can just look at your own campaign data. So let's have a closer look at where that plays out and how you actually activate that on the campaign canvas. So if we look at the campaign canvas, uh, up in the top left hand corner of the screen, there's an options menu. We'll just increase that a little bit so you can see it. And then there's the campaign fields area. When you click on campaign fields, you're then brought to a pop-up screen that looks just like this. And so what this enables you to do under the product region or campaign type is you're effectively producing pick lists just as you would for a form, no different. Uh, and it's done in exactly the same area uh, under settings in the back end of Eloqua. And then you assign those pick lists to product, region, and campaign type. Now, we can't change the wording of product, region, or campaign type, but whatever the values that you want, you can put into those drop down lists. So maybe it's more about services from your point of view than it is about product. So that's fine. We can, as I said, we can't change the word product, but we can certainly put in whatever you want uh, within that particular pick list. All right, let's take a look at the dashboards and explore them in a little bit more detail. Okay, so here we are in Eloqua. Uh, we've selected dashboards from the analytics menu at the top of the screen. Uh, let's go through and we'll start in the top left hand corner with campaigns or the campaign analysis overview report. Okay, so the first thing you'll see is date range information. It tends to default to last two weeks. You can choose last month or in fact play with custom. So if we go to custom, uh, let's have a look for instance, maybe the last six months of last year. So I can, actually that would be July, wouldn't it? Hang on. There we go, July 1st through to December 2016. And make it the 31st, click on apply. 
and that information reloads. So you can see it's quite quick in the way that it, it functions, which is nice. The campaign activity timeline is broken down by day, which is probably a little bit too granular. So I might change that to month. And just simply by hovering, I can start to see the various campaign types. So these are our newsletter outside the cube. Um, I can see event information there, uh, some administration emails as well. Uh, our user group communications. So you can see lots of information. If I keep scrolling down, uh, we can see inbound and outbound activity. And then the activity summary here at the bottom. So this is now showing us all of the campaigns and I can adjust this to here to show the other more or more information. Now you can see here with the campaign type, region and product, if you don't have this information populated, obviously it becomes a bit vague. Uh, and so the reporting is, is diminished in relation to its effectiveness or uh, value to your organization. So by simply arranging to establish campaign types, region and product, you can immediately get much more uh, out of the, uh, the campaigns and out of the dashboards. Now, if you wanted to filter on this information, for instance, so the user group is a big chunk of our comms. So if I reduce that, I just simply untick the relevant box, etc. Maybe let's lose administration. Um, Maybe it'll lose joint campaigns, anything that's uncategorized. Business partner wasn't a great deal, etc. We can reduce something like that. However, we end up with this mash of, uh, of little campaigns sitting here. So if we wanted to get a closer look at that, uh, by holding down your shift key, you can start to drill in to that information or just using your mouse, etc. And you'll start to see a little bit more detail there. Now you can always reset the zoom, but what that's doing, it's now enabling you to look a little bit closer at some of those individual uh, campaigns that have been running. You can then reset the zoom and then you're back to where you were. And again, everything here is a hover over type of basis. So very easy information to understand, to digest. And again, you can see here in relation to responses. So the importance of establishing what the response rules are for your organization, again, will impact the effectiveness of this, uh, this campaign or this dashboard. So let's go back to dashboards and let's break that down now, looking at a individual uh, campaign. So if I type in the name of a campaign that I'm looking for, and let's have a look at the user group. So now what we're doing is we're looking specifically at one particular campaign. And in that particular campaign, you can see there were two assets involved, uh, which is an email for Melbourne and Sydney. We can see the response rates. Now our audience in Sydney was significant la significantly larger. Um, and while the response is inbound activity, it'd be interesting to understand that in the percentage. Let's have a look. Um, so we can see overall activity here through October. See how much lagging there was. There's a little bit more activity happening along the trail there. Not too much. Here's the inbound activity. So we can see people responding, certainly for a few days after the event took place. And then total responses there. And here's the, the two emails shown side by side. Quite a bit of detail there for you to understand what's going on. You've got percentages available here at the top uh, for inbound activity uh, counts. And over here is the summary information, um, who activated the campaign, so who in the team uh, activated it, the start and end date uh, of those campaigns, the region, product, and also the status, the fact that it's completed, and also the type. In our case, this was a joint campaign with our friends at Oracle. So that covers the campaign information. Let's have a look at email analysis overview. So again, what we're doing here is we're starting at the highest level, looking at all of the different email groups. Um, let's remove a couple that have had less activity, like so. And you'll notice here with the activity timeline, you can focus on opens, click-throughs, and also form submissions. So click-throughs is probably a nicer metric uh, to work on. And so we can see that information right through here. And again, it, you can hover to see what's going on. Now, when you look through the bottom here, if we look at, say, for instance, um, the marquee announcement, which was an individual email, we can then drill in and how, now have a look at this particular email and what was going on and what happened. So you'll notice there's uh, various segments. 
And so what we did is we actually had one, two, three segments sitting on the particular canvas, uh, pushing out uh, various emails. And you can see here with our executive, uh, so we had key executive and eloquent administrator was an audience and also an internal seed list that we wanted to communicate with as well. And so you can see the various activity there across here. So opens, you can see the sort of trickling along, moving from the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th, etc. And across the top is more of a, a slight dashboard view. So click to open rates, etc. And again, you can hover on those to see exactly what was going on. So again, lots of information to help you drill in and see what's happening. Uh, we can now play with an individual email. Let's have a close look. Okay, let's have a look and see who looked at our holiday closure uh, emails. So here you'll see what we've done is gone straight into uh, that same report that we we're looking at just a moment ago without having to click through, for instance. Um, so again, just showing you uh, click through or unique opens, click to open form conversions. There weren't any forms in this instance uh, and potentially some bounce backs there that we probably need to look at to clean the database a little. So hopefully uh, what you're seeing here is lots of information to help you quickly uh, understand what's happening within the platform and within your campaigns and that's the key objective uh, with these dashboards is to do exactly that to provide you with a really quick and easy way uh, to access information and to see exactly what's happening uh, with your various campaigns okay so some action items for you out of today two basically one is to lock in activity types so that's your product region and campaign type information determining exactly what they are and adding those to the campaign and then making them required fields to really ensure the quality uh, of that reporting so that you can get much more out of the dashboards. And number two, to define your response rules. Uh, if you need a hand with any of these things, please contact uh, the support team at Marketing Cube. We'd be happy to give you a hand with that. If you've got any questions, please contact me directly uh, or, to, or you can contact the support team at support at marketingcube.com.au. Now let's have a look at one other place where you can go to get some more information uh, and to help you through that process. From any of the, the major home screens within Eloqua, whether it be email, landing pages, segments, campaigns, etc., down in the bottom right hand corner under the help screen or under the help area, there's the Eloqua Help Center. If you click on the Help Center, uh, that'll take you straight through. And then if you access analytics on the left hand side, of the screen you can then find dashboards and then within there you'll find quite a bit of information just to help you understand and reiterate exactly what it is you're looking at so is it unique is it grouped who's counted as a campaign member or whose results are seen within the dashboard reporting etc you'll find all of that information clarified here within the help center under the analytics and then dashboards area now we understand from our friends at Oracle that there certainly is more to come. Um, landing pages apparently are the next ones to uh, be added to the dashboard area, so that will be good news. And there is a whisper of looking at uh, Eloqua looking to develop or apparently in the process of developing a kind of customer journey dashboard. Certainly nothing concrete at this stage and I probably should be talking about safe harbor statements right about now, but uh, something else that's on the radar. So uh, as soon as we hear any more or have anything to show you, we'll uh, be sure to get that information to you. Thanks again for joining us today. We hope this information has been valuable for you. If Again, if you do have any questions, please contact us. Our information is available there on the screen right now. Uh, we'd be happy to talk with you further. Cheers, have a great day. Thanks guys.